Hey everybody, uh, my name's Ryan. This is my Raspberry Pi uh, Sprout 2, um, and welcome to another episode of Sprout Tutorials. Uh, today is exciting because we are uh, doing my first episode in a long time on the Raspberry Pi 5. Um, so I thought I would um, come back with an easy one today and show you guys um, how to um, create a mod pack uh, server on your Raspberry Pi. Um, this is a little different than doing just a Forge server, a Fabric server um, with mods. This kind of gets a mod pack with all the mods already included. Um, and you can see here, for example, this mod pack has 299 mods. So if you don't feel like adding a bunch of mods yourself and you find a pack that you really like, um, the Raspberry Pi 5 actually does not bad with some of these mod packs um, that don't need too much RAM. So today we're looking at one called All the Mods 9, um, and this one is specifically called No Frills. Um, and I chose this one because um, the mod developers mentioned that um, this, this mod pack plays quite well with only four gigabytes of RAM allocated. So um, we're gonna do something like that. We're gonna give it more than four gigs um, and see how it runs here on the Raspberry Pi. So um, as usual, let's hop over to our one of our root users um, and we're gonna create a directory. So let's do um, uh, mkdr and we'll call this, um, I don't know, we'll call this uh, atm9nf for no frills. And then uh, let's change owner. Uh, I've gone over videos before about um, having users for certain uh, directories and functions um, you shouldn't probably be running servers as sudo or root. So I've got a user here called um, Minecraft and we're gonna um, change the ownership of the directory to user Minecraft and we're also gonna change the group. Um, this allows you to just do certain functions without having to run sudo. So we'll hop over here to our other user and we'll um, uh, change over to our directory. We see that it's empty. Um, so that's great. So the first thing we wanna do is, um, if you're unfamiliar with CurseForge, I highly recommend you download it. Um, I guess I'll leave a link to the download in the description. Uh, but CurseForge is really cool. Um, it just has mods and mod packs for all sorts of different games. Um, I mostly just use it for Minecraft and you can see uh, two of the mod packs that I run here. So you can just go to browse um, and you can search um, ATM9 no frills, let's see that comes up with anything. Yeah, so we go ahead and click here and then this little three uh, dot icon here, you go ahead and click the option that says download server pack. Um, so we can see here now um, that that is downloading. So I've already downloaded that. Um, so let's hop over to, um, this is my, let's hop over to our downloads directory. Um, so if we do a quick ls minus ltr, that'll actually show you um, all of the most recent downloads um, by date. So we can see here, I've got some other downloads. Um, very cool. So what we wanna do, um, let's do that again, ls minus ltr. So we're gonna do scp, um, server files, uh, zip, and we're going to do that to user Minecraft at your Raspberry Pi address. It's gonna ask for a password and there it goes, depending on your internet speed and so on. Um, this will go quickly or not. And I guess it depends on your computer as well. So we'll go ahead and wait for that to finish. And there we go. So we hop over to um, our directory here uh, and it looks like, yes, .1.8, right? Yeah, I've got a couple of others here, so 1.8. So we're gonna go ahead and do MV, which I guess stands for move. Um, and we're gonna send that over to our directory that we created, all the mods, nine, no frills. Okay, and uh, let's hop over there. Okay, and you can name these directories anything you want. It doesn't have to be ATM9NF. Um, I just actually have another directory called all the mods nine that I didn't wanna delete. So we are um, going here. Okay, cool, so if we uh, do, quick, do a quick command, which is unzip um, this, you can see that it's unzipping all of that stuff, which is very cool. 
Um, then if we do an ls, now we have a directory called server files. Um, you can rename this directory again by doing the mv command. You can call it something like um, just atm9nf if we want. Uh, I think that, should, let's see, how do we do this? Cannot stat mv, sorry, server files dot one dot eight to atm9nf. Let's see if that works. Yeah, very cool. So we can rename that directory if we want. MV can also be used for renaming uh, directories or files, um, or we can use it to move files. Um, so let's CD over there. Uh, let's LS, and you see we've got a couple of things here. So I believe now what we want to do is, um, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's CD over to mods. Yes, and we can see we have loads and loads of mods in here. So we don't have to manually enter those ourselves. So we'll go back. Um, so I believe what we want to do is let's nano over to, um, let's see what happens when we do um, Java for, no, let's see, Java minus jar, forge, blah, 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 blah. And then we want to do install server. I believe, actually, I believe it's a lowercase i, install, and an uppercase s, install server. Let's see what happens when we do that. <clears throat> And that's kind of cool. It's already got the Forge um, uh, installer in there that we need. We don't need to manually put it in there like we do with um, just like a, a normal uh, Forge server. So let's see what happens. It's been a while since I've done this, but I believe I'm, I'm doing things correctly here. Just drinking some tea. And um, yeah, I'll either speed this up to when it finishes or we'll just kind of wait here. Um, or you can skip ahead in the video. So far, so good. I'm not getting any big errors. I believe this is right. <sighs> Can't find class. Yeah, I think that's fine. Loading patch files, patching. Okay, the server installed successfully. You can delete the installer file if you wish. So let's clear that, we'll ls. Now we've got some other things in here, specifically the run.sh. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna rm the um, installer file. rm is just remove. So if we ls, that's not there anymore. Um, now let's quick quickly, uh, let's nano into the run.sh file. And let's zoom out a bit here so we can see it. Um, you can see here that uh, this bash script, this is a bash script, but an sh is, um, it's going to run Java, and then it's going to run the commands that are in the user JVM args.txt uh, file. So let's hop over there. Um, so if we do nano user JVM args.txt, um, you can see that they've already got um, a bunch of Iker flags in here, which is really cool. You can modify this to your desire, but we are going to change a few things. So because the Raspberry Pi 5, um, while it is better, faster, stronger than the Raspberry Pi 4, um, we still only have eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, and if we you know, even check here, when we run HTOP, there's really only 7.86 um, gigabytes available um, because the system doesn't want you running you know, everything all the time at once. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play it safe and we're gonna put this at 5,500 M, which is for megabytes, and we're also going to change the XMX to 5,500M. Um, make sure that's capital. Okay, and yeah, everything else here looks pretty good. Just for um, tutorial sakes, we'll do Control X, press Y, enter. And let's see what happens when we do, um, you can do bash or you can do period forward slash run.sh. And that should get the server going, and that might take a minute. We'll have to agree to EULA as usual. Okay, and I'm actually, I'm gonna hop over to um, this uh, mod pack here real quick. Um, or no, let's see, what do I wanna do? I want to, just while that's running, um, I do wanna check the uh, mods folder to see if this has Chunky. Uh, Chunky is a really cool, uh, mod used to pre-generate chunks for your server. And I'm pretty sure it's not in here, CH. So yeah, if you if it were me, um, in, in 
in the comments, if you want to comment below and tell me if there is another mod in here that allows you to pre-generate chunks, um, I'm unaware of it. I'm just, there's so many mods, I'm not quite sure. Um, so what I would do if I were you is I would um, download this app, Chunky, um, for Forge, and make sure you find the correct version. So let's see, this mod pack is running on version 1.20.1. So if you can find chunky version, this should be okay, 1.3.9.2. Um, this is for Forge. So maybe download a couple because sometimes it won't load if you download the wrong file, but download chunky, just a recommendation, um, and put that in your mods folder and that'll allow you to um, pre-generate chunks, which is maybe another video I can do. Um, but anyway, let's hop back over to our terminal and see how this is doing. Okay, great. So we need to agree to EULA. Let's clear that ls. Um, we'll nano the eula.txt, which is here. Okay, let's change this from false to true. Control X, ls. And I believe, do we have server.properties? No. So we're just going to go ahead and run that again. And um, let me go ahead and boot up this mod. Um, just so we can be ready to join it when it is ready to load. This will probably take on the very first time, even though again, the Raspberry Pi 5 is better, faster, stronger, um, just to load up the initial server, I believe should take, gosh, I don't know, um, maybe a couple minutes. I wanna say it's something like 350 seconds or something. Um, so let's go ahead and let this load. And uh, depending on your computer, I just got a new MacBook, which I'm very happy with. Um, it's the um, MacBook Pro with, I think, an M3 chip. Um, and my goodness, the uh, speed of these mod packs loading up before on my old MacBook was just so slow, but um, now it is quite fast. So um, yeah, we'll go ahead and get these both going and maybe I'll speed up the video or you can just skip ahead to the next uh, chapter. Wow, look at that, it's already ready. Uh, let's go ahead and lower the music. Okay. So can't connect to server because it's not online yet. And I've already, um, let's go ahead and delete that. So what you want to do is um, you can call this server anything you want. I'll just call it Newlands. That's what I call my servers. And uh, you can put in your local IP address or the name of your Raspberry Pi. So mine is, um, um, I believe, sprout2.local. I think that should be fine. And that's what you name your Pi when, you, um, when you're first booting it up. Um, and yeah, we'll just go ahead and wait for that to finish loading. It's kind of nice music actually. Uh, elevator music here. As I mentioned, this is just going to take some time because I believe there are 299 mods that it has to line by line go through. So we'll just wait for that to finish. And now it's finally preparing the spawn area, so that'll take its own time as well. Um, next time you boot this thing up though, it should, as I mentioned, initiate rather quickly. I want to say the difference in time is like, well, I mean, we'll see. I want to say about maybe 300 seconds. And uh, in the future, it should only take, uh, gosh, I don't know, maybe 40 seconds because it won't have to prepare the spawn area, especially. Okay, uh, 
finish loading ender chest data. So let's scroll back up real quick. Um, done, 85 seconds. Okay, that's shorter than I thought, although it felt longer. Uh, we should be good. So notice too, um, I would love to hear in the comments if anybody is able to uh, tell me about this. Oh, dedicated server took 224 seconds to load. Okay, cool. So yeah, if anybody wants to help me um, understand how to lower this uh, 40 ticks behind, ideally we're no ticks behind, um, but I think just because the fact of our hardware here, the Raspberry Pi 5, um, we're gonna be some ticks behind, but please correct me if I'm wrong. I would love to know how to um, change that. So real quick, I'm gonna OP myself. Um, that's my username there. So let's hop over here, refresh, and there we are, boom, let's hop in. Oh no, okay, failed to connect the server, connection closed, so we're missing some mods. Ah, okay, so this is actually a good learning moment. So um, what we wanna do actually, okay, so great learning moment. I remember this problem. Uh, so it says that on the curse forge, for some reason there's a, a disconnect between the mods on the curse forge mod pack that I've downloaded on the server side and when I press play. I don't know why that is, but there's a very easy way to change that. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, you have server has. That's right, so we need this 8.6.2. So what we're gonna do is we're going to open our mods folder. Um, and what are we going to do? How do we find the location of this? All mods nine, no frills, okay. So how do we wanna do this? Here we go. Okay, so I just need the destination. So the Curse Forge directory, Minecraft. Okay, guys, give me one second. I'm gonna figure this out. Open mods folder, mods. So basically what you can do is you, you find the directory to your mods folder. Um, and we are going to go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna do a command C. I'm gonna hop over to my desktop. I'm gonna do command V to get that there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hop over to um, my, I'm gonna get another channel open here. So we're gonna get in Minecraft, add sprout2.local, and log in. So what am I going to do? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm gonna to change to my desktop. And here we see, um, here's the mods folder. So what I wanna do is I wanna replace this with the mods folder that is here. Um, so that our mods in the CurseForge directory match the mods in our Raspberry Pi directory. So very easy way to do that, even through the terminal super quickly, we can do SCP and we're gonna do Minecraft at sprout2.local and then we need to do the, um, do opt slash, um, what is the directory here? Basically just copy and paste this. Um, ba -da -ba -da -bum. Yes. So you can do SCP uh, minus R. Don't forget that because we're doing a directory. So SCP minus R uh, Minecraft at sprout2.local and then the directory path to your mods folder. And then we're gonna uh, copy that to desktop, which should replace the mods folder we have here. So let's see if that works, enter our password, and boom, there we go, there's all the um, mods, all 200 and something of them. Okay, so let's let that go. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and clear that. And then if we do a quick ls minus LTR, we can see that um, the new mods folder was created 1254. So 
Now what we wanna do, we can hop over to our GUI, is I'm gonna command C this, I'm gonna go back, and I'm going to remove this and then paste it. So now it should have the mods at once. I suppose a very um, easy indirect way of doing this as well, or a more direct way, is just to replace the mod. So it's gonna tell you what mod you have in your uh, CurseForge mods folder and what uh, mod they have on the server side. And you can just individually download that from CurseForge, but um, I like using the terminal. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to close this and we're going to open CurseForge one more time. And I believe we should be able to um, log in with the correct mods. <clears throat> okay, we'll press play. <clears throat> and luckily, because I have a new computer, this should go a lot smoother and faster than, than normal. And we can see our, uh, our server is still going here, so that's nice. Go ahead and close out of some of these tabs. And um, this is not to say that every mod pack is gonna have this problem, but um, yeah, just pay attention to the mods in your CurseForge mod directory and your server mod directory. So hopefully this should work. And it wouldn't be a, uh, a Sprout tutorial video without a little bit of troubleshooting. So there we go. Looks like I'm logging in on the server side. We can see here, very cool. 54 ticks behind, so it's a little more than before, um, but I think it's okay. Okay, come on now, let's minimize that. And there we go, boom. Oh my God, what is this? Bituminous sand, very cool. So there we go, I am logged in on, oh my God, there's a pyramid. So I have actually not fully played this mod pack through. Um, I just know that uh, it's got a lot of mods and it runs pretty well on, uh, you can see here like there's no real lag, like it's real smooth. So in terms of just running this for you and a couple of friends, I think it should be just fine. So that's how you um, do a mod pack on Raspberry Pi 5. Thank you guys uh, so much for, <laughs> this is what they do, right? Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.